Linear approximation. Okay. So we're going to be looking at linear approximation in this lesson and some applications of linear approximation. Engineering and science depend on approximation in most practical applications. It's important to understand how approximation techniques work. Sometimes we're interested in the effects of a small change on x. Okay. So here we have a, a function graphed. And here we have a tangent line. All right, so remember our tangent, this is f prime of a, that would be our slope, right? Because f prime is our derivative. And to find the slope of the tangent line, we substitute a value of x, and we find the slope at some particular x. And that's actually the slope of the tangent line, I should say. So the tangent line, remember, it uh, follows our curve. It's the slope of our curve at a specific point. So f prime of a is the slope of the tangent line. For a particular va a value of x. And it also gives us the, the, the rate of change right at that point, of our, the rate of change of our function at that point. Right? And then, of course, of course, I have to have a variable in there to write the equation. A is just the value you plugged in, so this is the value of x. And f of a, that's the value of y. All right, so that's just a linear function, that's, and this is just the tangent line. That's all that's shown in this particular picture here. So for any function, of f, any function f of x, the tangent is a close approximation of the function for some small, some small distance from the tangent point. Right, right, right at uh, some particular value of x, it is the instantaneous rate of change. And if we stay very close to that area, right, that tangent line is very, is very close to our function. And it's a pretty good, it's a very good approximation of our function. All right, so you notice here we have some, some function here, graphed in blue. And the red is the tangent line, right? And our graph here, F, the, um, the point on the tangent line is very close to the point of, on our actual function there. We call the equation of the tangent line the linearization of the function. And that's because our, our tangent line is, is just that, it's a line. Right? So I'm taking this curve and I'm describing it with my tangent line, which is a line. So the tangent line, remember, is the instantaneous rate of change at some point. If f is differentiable, uh, and by the way, make sure you're following along in your notes. I've given you most of these in your notes. If f is differentiable at a, then l is a good approximation. So l, by the way, is the tangent line. I wrote it down there. l is the tangent line. It's a good approximation of your function so long as f is not too far from a. Put another way, if f is differentiable at a, then under a microscope, f will look very much like a straight line. So in other words, that green that if I look at that green function there that's graphed in the first graph, well, I can see that's a curve. But what if I get really close to it, and I just look at an area really close to that tangent line there? You notice in the second graph, well, that's starting to look almost like a line. It's, pretty, it's much closer to my tangent line, especially in the middle there. Off to the, you know, on either side, I'm not exactly on my tangent line, but in the middle, I'm right at my tangent line. And now what if I get really, really close, like I do in the third graph there? Well, look how close we are. We're so close to the tangent line, I can't even see the green graph separate from the red graph. Right, so this is the linear approximation to y equals x squared. We know y equals x squared is a curve. But as we get closer and closer and hone in on just one small area, uh, one small section of y equals x squared, well, that small section looks an awful lot like a line. All right, so if we want to approximate, uh, so up above it says figure 6.41 shows a tangent line to x equal, y equals x squared at three different magnifications. The closer we get, the more the function looks like a line. 
If we want to approximate f of b because computing exactly is difficult, we can approximate the value using a linear approximation provided that we can compute the tangent line at some a close to b. In other words, if maybe it's hard to evaluate our function and we don't want to evaluate our function, we could use our tangent line because our tangent line is easy. It's a linear function. It's not very difficult to evaluate using a linear function, right? You just plug in your value for x and you get your value for y, right? It's easy, right? So we can use that tangent line to approximate other values. So any differentiable curve is locally linear if you zoom in enough times, right? In other words, in that little small section, it's a line if you get close enough. A fancy name for the equation of the tangent line at A is called the linearization of F at A, and hence the name of our lesson here. All right, so y minus f of a equals f prime of a at x minus a. And all that really is is the tangent line, right? We know f prime of a is our, this is just, this is actually the point slope form, right? y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. All that is is a, the slope of, that's just a line, a linear function that's written in point slope form. f of a is y naught. It's our, it's our x value. It's the, obviously our y value, right? We plug in a into the function and we get a y value. y naught is just the y value of, of, that, of our function. f prime of a is just m which is the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of our function at that point, right? It's describing the instantaneous rate of change. And then x naught, oh, excuse me, a is just x naught. It's the x value. So all this is, written there in black, that y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a, that is point slope form. That's all that is. Using the, um, the derivative and plugging it in to get the slope of the tangent line and using some point, the point of, a point of interest. So tangent line approximation. So that's using a tangent line to approximate our function. Consider a tangent to a function at a point x equals a. Close to the point, the tangent line is an approximation of f of x. Now if I get too far away, like I'm over here, you know, if I go over, oops, over here, all right, so if I'm interested in my function over there, well, that tangent line would not be a very good choice because my tangent line is nowhere near that point, right, because it's going through here. But if I'm very close to here, say maybe right there, my tangent line is a very good approximation because my tangent line is uh, of that function because my tangent line is very close to that function. So we can use our tangent line to uh, approximate values on our function so long as we stay really close to our tangent line, you know, to that, that point that our tangent line is going through the point of tangency, right? So close to the point, the tangent line is an approximation of f of x. And the equation of a tangent line is written on the side there, y equals, so f of a plus f prime of a, x minus a. That's going to be our approximation. We're using the tangent line to get our approximation. And all you're doing is using the equation in point slope form. So the linear approximation formula arises from the definition of the derivative of a function. Remember, the definition of a derivative of a function is where we started with derivatives. All right, so the definition is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a is our derivative, right? We're, take, we're looking at a, a small, we're taking the limit. The limit as that difference approaches zero. We probably wrote it more like this. As h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? But this is the same thing, okay? Now let's take a look at this particular function, or this uh, limit here. And 
Notice down here, what if I want to get rid of the denominator? Well, how would I get rid of the denominator? I'd multiply both sides by x minus a, right? What's in the denominator? So it would cancel on one side, and now I've got x minus a in the, denom in the numerator. And so now I'd have f of x minus f, prime, f of a equals f prime of a x minus a. Hey, that was just the equation that we had, and all that is is it's the, the, the uh, equation for a tangent line. Okay. It's the slope of our tangent line. All right, so uh, multiply across by x minus a and rearrange your terms. So f of x is approximately what you get from your tangent line. f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. And all this f of a is is the value of y, right? I can put this in slope, in, I can put this in, in slope intercept form, right? And I'd have my slope times x then plus an a, plus my, plus my y. So your derivative is your slope. This is a linear approximation formula. y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a is the equation of a line with slope f, f prime of x and xy equaling a f of a. So remember you plug in your value of x to get your value of y. So a is your x and f of a is your y value is one point on the line. It's the equation of the tangent line to the graph y equals f of x at the point where x equals a. Graphically, the linear approximation formula says that the graph y equals f of x is close to the graph of the tangent line, y equals f of a plus f prime of a x minus a, if we stay near to the point of tangency, x y equals a f of a. So if I stay very close to my point of tangency, my this, my tangent line is a good, a good uh, descriptor of the points near there. So if it's easy to evaluate my tangent line and difficult to evaluate my function, we can use the tangent line, which is easy, to evaluate the function, which is difficult. Right? So now you're getting the idea of how we use linear approximation. We use it to evaluate things that are difficult using something that's simple. Right? And you like simple. All right, so linear approximation is the same as tangent line approximation. It means the same thing. Linearization, linear approximation, tangent line approximation, it's all the same, it's all the same thing. We're claiming that a point on our function is, is approximately the value we get from our tangent line. Okay? So if we take our derivative, and you can use that to find the slope of, we can find a point on our function using our tangent line instead. This is called the linearization of the function at the point A. Recall that when we zoom in on an interval of a function far enough, it looks like a line. So our tangent line, so long as I stay pretty close, will be a very good descriptor. And you might think, well, how close is close enough? Well, the closer you are, the better descriptor it is. And if you, as you get farther away, it might, it gets, a, you know, it, my approximating gets a little bit more approximate. So we try to stay very close. We use linear approximation to do lots of things, and we're going to do all of these things. We're going to estimate the value of a function. We're going to compute a differential. We're going to find the change in y for a small change in x, and it's very easy, and it's a lot easier than finding out what the actual change is, and it's a it's very, very close approximation. And we're going to have real-world applications on the effects of small changes in one variable on another. So if I change one variable just a little bit, how much will I change the other variable? And rather than using the original function, we're going to be using the tangent line. We're going to be approximating. Okay? So our first definition, if f of x is a differentiable real function at x equals a, then the approximating function t of x equals f of a plus f prime of a x minus a is called the linearization of f at a. It is the tangent line. It's the equation of the tangent line. Okay? The approximation f of x is approximately t of x. In other words, the value of our function is approximately the same as we get using the, slope of the, using the tangent line. So f of x, this is the actual value of the function. And this is the approximate value okay. 
using the tangent line. Did I write the rest of that word? Yeah. At a point. Remember, because we have a different tangent line at every point. So we're writing it at a specific point. And, we're, and the point is going to be one that's close to and usually easier to calculate than the one we're looking for. Uh, uh, so f of x is approximately t of x of f by t is the standard linear approximation of f at a. The point x equals a is the center of the approximation. In other words, it's the, it's the point of tangency. It's where our tangent line is going through our function. That's all a point of tangency is. <coughs> By the way, we haven't actually done any calculating yet, but I've been giving you the background. Okay? And uh, hopefully that's giving you the understanding to be able to solve these. And maybe go back and look at that, the uh, exploration that we did on Friday and maybe with a, a different mindset and see if you can answer some of those questions. The accuracy of the approximation can be measured in di by different formulas. So um, we will look at that. That's, we're looking at, we can look at how great the magnitude of error is um, as well. Um, a small error might be tolerable. And um, so we might decide, OK, as long as our error is less than this, we're good with that. Um, and error is just a, a part of, you know, and any type of, of reality. I mean, when they, even if you look at it like maybe a screw or a nail, um, a three quarter inch nail is not, or three quarter inch screw is not necessarily going to be three quarters of an inch. There is a margin of error. Okay, so if the margin error is small enough, we might be fine with that. If the margin error is too large, we might not be fine with that, but we can calculate that out as well. So the utility of a linearization is its ability to replace a complicated formula by a simpler one over some interval of values. A linear approximation normally loses accuracy away from the center. So what that means is we're taking something complicated and we're replacing it with something easy. It is easy to use the tangent line. Linear functions are easy to calculate with. Other functions are not as easy. And the more complicated the function gets, the more difficult it may be to approximate with it. Right? Um, and so long as we stay close to our, um, our original point, you know, close, or close to that point of tangency, uh, it will be OK. And we'll only be, we'll be almost ac ac accurate, just a, just a little bit of error. So the equation of the tangent line, here are all different ways that you can write that. Right? I've been saying y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. But we know that, it, that you, you're used to seeing point slope form, right? where we have y minus y1, f of a is y minus y1. Or actually, well, <laughs> once we've moved it over, right? So once we've added y1 to the other side, sometimes we write, I often write equations like this, and actually this is very common on AP as well, to just move, to, to not bother to multiply this out and add this. So this is another way to look at that third method, the third uh, line there is another way to look at an uh, equation of a line y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1, okay? So this function on top there and the third function, the first and the third function, are essentially the same, okay? They're just using different terminology. We're using f prime of a for slope because that's how we find the slope of our tangent line. Um, and we're using f of a because we have to plug the value in, right? We have to plug in x into our function, in this case, into our linear function, into our tangent line to get, to get y. Okay? So a is x naught, and x is just another point. Linear approximation can be used to estimate the value of a function. And I think I'm going to stop right here. I had said it would be about 20 minutes. I've gone through. 11 pages of notes um, and we're going to pick up right here and we're going to use a linear approximation to estimate the square root of 80 in class. 
right? So we're going to be looking at doing these problems in class on Monday, um, and we'll see how far we get, and we can always do another podcast, but I think this will end my podcast for today. So hopefully it's given you some understanding of, um, actually, I want to go back and do one little thing before I close this podcast. And that's just looking at a graph. Actually, let me just do it this way. Let me go back to one of the beginning there. That very first graph. This one will work. Let me see what this one is. It's easier to see. I think I, yeah. So here, this one works out perfectly. Some of us are having a little bit of trouble with some of the terminology that we use in calculus. So if I go from this point here to this point here, what is that called? Change in x. If I go from that point to that point there, what's that called? Change in y. All right. Think back. I, I will say no more on this than that. But think back to that assignment. And when you get to a problem asking you to find dx and dy on the graph, maybe that will, this will help you remember that dx is change in x and dy is change in y. All right? All right, so in class, we'll be looking at how to take the square root of 80 very easily. You don't even need a calculator. How about that? Bet you couldn't do that before. All right, so bye. And I'll see you on Tuesday. I think I said Monday, Tuesday.